10th edition is just right around the corner. And that kind of got me thinking, I need to finish my Terminators from Space Hulk. And I thought, you know what? I mean, these are the best looking Terminators to date. I think so, at least. So originally I have a Space Hulk Terminator that I used in a bunch of previous videos, but I realized that I need to paint the rest of them up and I wanted to paint them quickly. I'm gonna tell you why I completely failed at speed painting these Terminators, even though that was the whole objective of this video. I'm Khan and you're watching The Wrath of Minis. Speed painting, what is speed painting? Obviously it's you taking drugs and utilizing paint. That's probably not what you're thinking. It actually isn't that either. And you could say speed painting is just you going as fast as humanly possible with a paintbrush and some paint, or not without a paintbrush, and trying to paint your minis. The question is, really, is how far do you want to go? How high level do you want to push your miniatures into the amount of time that you're willing to give? Speed painting is all about steps and procedures. It's about figuring out what your workflow is from start to finish. What steps can you take? What steps must you take in order to complete your model? And how can you do it in the most efficient way possible? And so I'm going to talk to you about how I approached, how I thought about painting these Terminators, how I got their red color, how I created their gradients, and the details that I thought were the most important to pick out in order to make these models really shine. For me, I always start with Prime, and then I always start with a Xenotherm. So for me in the Xenotherm, it's just a white undercoat. But this time, I'm being a bit more exacting. I am picking certain areas out and trying to leave the difference between light and shadow throughout all of the model. I then am going to get, apply the base color down. And the base color for this is going to be the Liquitex Napathol Crimson. And this color I found was great for just the overall coverage of the Blood Angel Space Marine model. So I was like, this is a perfect red, just straight out of the bottle. Um, I applied that all over the model, retaining all the shadows and it's sort of the highlights and things like that, or it's mid-tone colors. The next step, is putting in the shading. And the shading area is for all the recess sections because what happens is that we've got this nice color down, but all of the individual elements or parts are not defined. And so this is in a video previously, something about framing and edge highlighting effectively and what we're trying to do with this thing. So for me, the way that I decided to frame everything by putting black lines into it, which you could individually do by hand with a paintbrush. But instead, I decided to do something called an oil wash, which is you take a bit of oil paint, generally a black kind of color or maybe a very dark brown, mix that with a bunch of white spirit, and then you apply that into all of the recesses. Effectively, what this will do is that because of the capillary action of oil paint, it will go into the recesses and hide there effectively, meaning that you'll create all these dark lines, which creates all the separation that you need. This is a really fast, efficient way of getting that effect without having to painstakingly do individual lines for everything. So I think this is a great, you know, speed painting test. I then approached painting the shadows. I used a bit of blue or like a bit of turquoise into the shadows because like the coldness of blue kind of acts as an idea to shadow, at least in our eyes. So I'm using a bit of blue into the recesses or into the shadow areas to kind of create a cool gradient feel. And so really at that point in time, you've completed an awful lot of painting. You've got, you know, lots of interesting effects going on, but with these models, they are so heavily detailed. And that's kind of a thing of modern Games Workshop models generally at this point in time, is there's just a lot more detail, a lot more things to be aware of whilst painting. So next up really is, you know, tackling all the metallics, tackling, you know, the chains, the, the paper, the, the, you know, the, the weapons and things of that nature, getting their eyes, doing the Terminatus thing on their shoulder, uh, all of the gems each one of them requiring you to go be very thorough, be very careful, pick out, pick them out, paint them up, and keep continuing doing base, mid-tone, and highlights for every single thing. So we have, you know, we have nice gradients here. We've got like nice shadows sitting here, and then we've got good like light sitting here on top of his head. So the difference between here and there 
is like very easy to see. Then obviously it was, yeah, it's all about picking out all the details. So we have all of this metal trim and there are tons of bits of metal. You know, some of it can be gold, some of it can be chains, and so there'll be silver. We also have, you know, the crux thing here. And so we need to pick them out. So we find our base color and tackle each one of those sections, being very careful not to touch any of the gradients that we've created. Effectively, the, all the gradient work that we've done with our airbrush means that we never really have to go back with it with a brush meaning we have really reduced the amount of steps that we're taking and we've been able to speed everything up. And when it comes to speed painting, speed is the name of the game. However, with all of these models, there are so many uh, little bits of detail here, you know, due to robes, due to the parchments or the papers, uh, all the little gems, even all the tiny little bits of metal, uh, like you know, rivets and things like that that stick out on the model. Each thing requires a bit of space and time in order to do that. And that actually is probably the thing that made this paint work the slowest. The fact that there was so much individual detail on all of these models really means that you have to require to stop, slow down and think about what you're painting and how you and what colors you want to choose. So for a good chunk of it, I just painted all the gold as the same, painted all the silver the same, and did all the cloth and parchment the same. Where everything gets more interesting uh, in terms of the painting, because I needed to speed up the process, it was utilizing inks. So in this, I use a lot of different kinds of inks. Um, all the gems are different colors, most part. The gold, I have applied sort of um, a sepia wash and applied some green to the areas as well as to the cloths and things like that. And inks are great because they don't cover up any of the detail, but they have a lot of pigment in them. They're really strong in their color. And so you apply them and you get a lot of punch and power with the colors that you're utilizing. So you retain the details, but you're just giving a bunch of power to your colors. And that's a really nice thing to have, especially I feel like when you're trying to quickly turn these things out. When it comes to highlights on your models and things like that, it really comes down to you and how much pop you want to give to your models. The more highlights you do, the better things show up. And so it's a worthwhile thing practicing and doing, even with speed painting, um, just getting a few highlights in the right spot sells the effect so very well. And so I try doing that here throughout all of the models. As you might be able to tell, though maybe you can't, is one of the things in these models is that I did not do any edge highlighting yet which is pretty cool. Like edge highlighting is a time consuming process and especially with the red and things like that because there's so much of it, I didn't do anything. So it's a neat way that if you don't like edge highlighting that you can kind of get away without having to do a whole lot of it, just a little bit in the right places could really make all the difference. One of the interesting aspects, at least for me, in terms of like learning about speed painting and trying to perform it in a reasonable level was figuring out all of the unique or individual steps that are needed to take in order to get to your model to the completion that you want it to be. And everyone's a little bit different there, so you're just gonna have to find your own. I found that it's neat to really dissect an individual section of your painting and determine if you think it's absolutely required or not, or if there are little shortcuts that you can kind of take. So for instance, I could have not primed my model black and then xenothalled white. I could have sprayed it completely just red from the start, then done a xenothal and then added my shadow. So I might have been able to do a reverse of it and without priming, possibly. Um, there are also ideas about how many individual steps do you want to take on any individual part. So if we look at a shoulder pad, for instance, right here. Well, yes, there's gray, but I've done several steps of gray and white on top of it to kind of pull out, you know, its midtones and its highlights to give it a sense. But you could just paint it all completely flat and leave it. That's a possibility. So there's lots of little moments in which that the painter has to decide what they want to leave out and what they don't want to leave out. Um, I do think that learning to be hyper efficient is a great way of there's an interesting practice in trying to get faster with your painting because then you can 
push more of it out and that's probably a good thing but also it's figuring out about what steps need to be gotten rid of to so that you can you know continue to paint more so i'm not very good at speed painting partly because i never really practiced it's not my area of expertise though i do enjoy the ideas of efficiency and things of that nature it's just not something that I naturally gravitate towards. However, with so many models coming out, you really need to be conscious of how long you are spending with painting. So for me, this was a perfect opportunity to get these models out in a relatively fast fashion without spending crazy amount of time. And so you can see that I have not completed my speed painting process with all of the models. Say for instance, this uh, librarian. Effectively, this model has just got tons and tons of detail. And the thing that I found is that all of them have tons and tons of detail. Partly, I wanted to do each one of these models justice. I wanted them to feel cool and look good. So I figured it was worth me spending the time on these details. And as I was continuing with it, I realized that there's a lot more work I could do to the models to make really each one of them feel more unique. So I might spend that time doing it, trying to change them up a little bit and add a bit more nuance to them. One of the elements for me about speed painting, I enjoyed a bunch of the practice in trying to get a bunch of this done really quickly. I feel like when I painted the red and got the, the dark recesses in, I was able to pull that off within a very short period of time. It was just everything else that kind of slowed me down, all the just the fiddly little extra bits. So I feel that speed painting is a great way of getting troops, getting the rank and file, getting things that are like not your main characters. And that's partly about like what you you give you elevate to you know wanting to spend more time on. So I feel like for regular troops, speed painting is a wonderful process. But as soon as you just start getting into your characters where there's so much little like ornate detail, it loses its ability um, because you need to be more conscious of those things. But there are still nice like little tips and tricks that, are, that you can pick up on the way which you can apply to any model. And so that's, a, that's the worthwhile thing about really figuring out how efficient you can be with your painting. So perhaps you're interested in doing some speed painting yourself and you want to find a way that you can get your army or your stuff, your troops done more quickly. I think the best thing you can do when it comes to practicing speed painting is to do a test model first. Uh, any place that you can see all the steps, either by writing it down or just getting a good sense about what you're willing to or willing or not willing to do, um, that you, once you figure out the steps, then you can begin the speed painting process. But in order to do it, I think you need to know pretty much everything from start to finish and what they're going to look like and how you're going to approach it. And so by doing that, I think the only way you can really do that is by going, taking one model from start to finish and seeing the whole process play out. So that would be my recommendation for anyone who's interested in speed painting, especially finding your own personal voice or way in which that you want to approach it. Okay, so you guys have made it this far, which is remarkable. Good on you. Um, I am pretty happy and pretty excited to see what 10th edition um, Games Workshop is going to do. Will the models be great? They are always. Will the rule set be good enough, which I'm like, huh, maybe it will pull me back into playing Warhammer 40k again. Don't be wrong, I would love to be building some armies and painting stuff. I have to convince Brianna. Everyone, you know what you need to do in the message section, convince Brianna. And then we'll be on our way for painting some 10th edition stuff. That will be cool. <laughs> um, otherwise, that's me. I'm signing out until the next time. And, uh, you know, stay frosty.